What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I wanted to kind of ask y'all a question. And I've been seeing this happening recently on social media with the recent debut of Jacob Fatu. People have been having this discussion as soon as he debuted. Uh, I've been seeing people say that Jacob Fatu has already outshined this new version of the bloodline. Now, do I agree with that wholeheartedly? Yes and no. The reason why I say it's it's kind of a mixed bag for me, because I, I don't think he's overshined them in a sense of just with this single debut, the the what he did attacking the top baby faces in the Cody, in the cover Cody, in the company, packing up Cody Rose the way he did. He looked he looked really great out there. And I, I think he made a very great impression. And I know casual fans or, you know, fans that may not even know about him, they're going to be interested to see who is this guy because he just came in here and wrecked shop. Apparently, Cody Rhodes at a recent house show said that uh, <clears throat> he may have two broken ribs. I'm not sure if he's, you know, just playing up kayfabe. That could be a situation. But if that is the case, I mean, the guy came out there and packed up cody packed up cody on his first night on the on the job um in a very believable way and i don't necessarily think that he's overshadowed i think he is added that extra layer of of dominance to the faction that they've been trying to build they've been trying to build this new bloodline faction as something really scary and it's kind of been working more so of what Paul Heyman's been doing in him selling this idea of he's literally a prisoner of this new bloodline. He's scared. He doesn't know what to do. He actually wants to leave. He misses Roman. Paul Heyman has really been the one that's been selling the idea that this new bloodline is really vicious and brutal. And when... The Tungans arrived initially how they, you know, how Kevin Owens got bloodied up and attacked. That's kind of the direction they were heading and it felt that way. But it seemed as if it was still missing something. And I think a lot of us that were in and out knew it was missing Jacob Fatu. And him being a part of the group is much needed because it adds that layer of real danger. And the thing is solo he's trying to find his his place in this situation solo hadn't really been presented as super dangerous since he fought john cena <clears throat> and then after that he went on a losing streak that was the last time he was presented as unhinged uncontrollable and dangerous y'all remember that time period where people were chanting for solo to maybe be the tribal chief because it seemed like he wasn't listening to Roman as much. And then that kind of died down after he packed up John Cena. So it, they didn't really go nowhere with that, which I think that was a mistake on WWE's part there. But now they're trying to build that back up, which is fine. The story that they're trying to tell. But I think having Jacob there does help the faction. So I'm not going to sit up here and say they just outshine. He's outshined them in just one night i wouldn't say that but he's made a very a very good impression to the point where people are really going to be interested to see what he's going to end up doing i mean it's not too often you have somebody come in and pack up your top baby faces and pack up your current champion the guy that beat roman reigns nobody else has packed them up like this and i'm in a sense of of course, AJ Styles did it with the few, but th that's AJ Styles. We know he has the capabilities. We know what he's all about. Someone that the the average day fan may not know about, seeing this guy do everything to their top favorite stars and then pack up Cody Rose the way he did. If you don't know who he is, now you're like, oh, he's, he's the most dangerous guy in the bloodline because none of these guys has done nothing like that. In a sense, so I know people are going 
saying that he's outshining the bloodline. And I wouldn't say that yet. Is uh, I'm really gonna be interested to see what type of matches he has, you know, solo matches that he has against, you know, established WWE stars. Only then, once I see the matches, the you know, potential feuds, and you know how they let him, you know, talk in the microphone, if they're gonna let him get promo time and stuff like that, and and really let him, you know, expand his character. Only then I'll give my judgment to be like, okay. If he's knocking it out apart out of on, on all those fronts, then I can be like, you know what? He is outshining them. Yeah, and um, that's there's nothing wrong if that is the case. If you do feel like he's already outshined them, there's nothing wrong with that. Because that you want to have someone who comes into to the storyline and comes into the company being a very big deal. So if that is something that you feel that is happening. Cool. Me personally, I'm not going to jump on that train just yet. I do like what they're doing with the new bloodline. I do think Paul Heyman is a very important part on why this bloodline 2.0 thing is even somewhat working because it's really Paul Heyman selling this idea of these savages. He's making them sound more savage than they are. I haven't really seen them be truly savage since <clears throat> I think it was Tamatonga, I believe it was Tamatonga when he first debuted and he he attacked uh Kevin Owens. I believe that was the 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 person that for me how he attacked Kevin Owens. He hit him with a car. He was busted open. He was bloody. That was cool because it gave off this savagery. Like oh shit. This guy, he like he was <clears throat> it that I like what they did there. Then Tong um Tonga Loa came in and that was cool, but I didn't get that savagery when he came in as well. You know, and then Tama Tonga with the yeah, 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 all that crazy shit. Like, all right, kind of works. You know, crawling and get crawling up the steps, like, all right, he, he seems unhinged, uncontrollable. I don't really get the same from Tonga Loa. Or whatnot. Um, not to say that they they can't do it. I, I just don't think they really kind of put him in that position to give off that savagery vibe as well. But at least with Jacob Fatu, he came in with that intensity, and it, I'm pretty sure he they'll probably book him to keep that same intensity. So I'm not gonna sit up here and say he's outshined the bloodline per se. Not yet. I, I do think he's added a lot more intrigue to them outside of what we've gotten so far but i will say this i do think um he's gonna enhance the group exponentially for sure and you know depending on the feuds and what they have for him to do it could be a situation where he may end up outshining the bloodline in the end you know in a sense of this new bloodline this new faction he may be that new star so you never know we'll see but either way it's a win-win for everybody i'm glad wwe pulled the trigger and i'm really excited to see what they have in store for him so comment down below do y'all agree with the statement that a lot of people have been saying that they feel that he is outshine the bloodline on his debut so far do y'all agree with that do y'all disagree i think it's too soon to be saying that y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm seeing you on speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace